Hello folks. Now, as many of you know, Corsair is a company with its fingers in many, many pies of the PC hardware industry, but it has been a driving force behind two in particular, and those all-in-one liquid coolers and RGB lighting. And today, those two forces come together to form a new family, the IQ Elite Capellix family of all-in-one liquid coolers, which is launching as Corsair's new flagship today. It's gonna to be available in 240mm, 280mm and 360mm variants, and we have that latter one, the 360mm, the H150i, in for review today. Now, if you know the difference between Corsair's many all-in-one liquid cooler offerings, then congratulations and please send us an email. But for everyone else, it's rather confusing. Now, if you look on a UK retailer for the H100i, for example, you will come across four different products, and that includes kind of two from the same family, the Platinum RGB one. Uh, so to tease out some differences, we've put together this table. So, what's new with the IQ Elite Capellix? Well, while the RGB Platinum family was the first to have RGB lighting on both the pump and fans, the IQ Elite Capellix is surprisingly the first Corsair one to offer this in the 360mm form factor that we're looking at today. Looking to distinguish itself from others like it, it also adds Capellix LEDs to the mix, at least on the pump, and you get a bundled Commander Core for pump, fan speed, and lighting control. As is often the case with new all-in-one launches, the market in here is concentrated on new features rather than performance. And here's what those new features do to the pricing. Put simply, this is Corsair's new top-tier product family, and each cooler carries a price tag to match. All five of these will continue to be sold. Corsair is continuing to use Corlit as the OEM for the pump and the cooling hardware, now the pump design is unchanged from the previous generations, so there's nothing new to speak of there, but where Corsair has focused its efforts is in tweaking the pump firmware and tweaking the fan curves, the overall aim being to increase performance without reducing noise too much. So just in case you don't know, the Capellix LEDs that give the product part of its name are a result of a partnership between Corsair and Primax, which is a Taiwanese manufacturer. And what they've done is essentially make RGB LEDs much, much smaller. And what this allows them to do is put more RGB LEDs into the same amount of PCB space, creating a brighter effect and creating smoother transitions between colors. Today's launch is the first time they've been used in an all-in-one liquid cooler, and specifically, they're on the pump head. Now, in this pump head, there are 33 Capellix LEDs, more than doubling the previous amount of 16. The effect, I think you'll agree, is pretty good, and we'll overlay some B-roll here so you can see what I mean. One thing that's included in the box for the pump head is a replacement cap. So this allows you to choose which one you prefer the look of. Now replacing it involves using the provided Allen key. It's a little bit weak and flimsy as you can see, but I suppose this does help prevent over tightening and it does get the job done. Now moving on to the other key feature for this product, we have the IQ Commander Core, which is a newly developed hub, which gives you control of pump, fan and RGB. Uh, now that's of course nothing new. You've been able to do that before on Corsair products, but what this one does is add expandability to your setup. You get six RGB connectors and six fan connectors, all of which can be controlled through IQ. So taking a closer look at the Commander Core itself, we find a SATA power connector, and this is preferred over Molex. It's thinner and easier to work with. And then data is a connection made via USB header. You also get what I think is a proprietary connector to connect to the pump itself. And then on one side, you have six standard four pin fan headers and on the other side, you've got six of Corsair's four pin RGB connectors. So just a quick aside on this four pin RGB connector, contrary to what others have said, this is not actually a proprietary connector. It's called the Locking DuPont connector and Corsair uses both three and four pin varieties in its RGB offerings. Now the locking element of the connector means that cables can be quite difficult to disconnect once they are connected, but this is actually a good thing when it comes to cable management. It means that they're not actually gonna just knock loose or be pulled out of place. So once they're connected, they stay very firmly in place and that's a good thing. And also the fact that it's not proprietary means that technically you can connect other RGB peripherals to it and control them through IQ. And there are people selling different adapters for these online. Covering that is outside the scope of this review, but it is an interesting side note. My main criticism of the IQ Commander Core is that it isn't magnetic. It comes with 3M tape instead, so you need to pick and choose your positioning very carefully because once it's connected, it's gonna be a bit annoying to reposition it. It might be a better idea to connect everything first and then use the final thing to connect it and choose your position, stick it in place. So back to the cooler itself, we've already covered the pump head and the various LEDs in there. 
you have a copper base plate and this normally comes with pre-applied thermal paste. Obviously we've already done the testing so it's been wiped clean but you do get pre-applied thermal paste. Now there isn't extra thermal paste supplied which I think for the price is a bit stingy but it is what it is. Uh, the pump head has two connectors coming out of it. The proprietary one that I mentioned which connects to the commander core and then a standard three pin one which just stops your motherboard from freaking out about there being no fan connected. Now moving up from the pump head, we find these tubes and they're quite nice. They have a nice thickness and they're very flexible. They're not going to kink easily. So you're pretty much safe with however you try to position the cooler. And then these feed into the radiator. Of course, on R1, it's 360 millimeter. And on all sizes, it's going to be 27 millimeter thick, which is the standard size for a slimline radiator. The final thing of note is, of course, the fans. And these are going to be attached to the radiator, which I should say is aluminium, by the way. Now, the fans that Corsair is using, they are part of the ML series. Uh, these are the ML RGB fans, but they are a slightly newer addition. And what they've done is change it from four LEDs to eight LEDs. Now, they're not Capellex LEDs, but Corsair has nonetheless doubled the amount inside. Now, we've tidied up the cable mess for the sake of the video, but remember, each fan does have two cables. There's one to control the motor and one for the RGB lighting. So six connectors in total, all of which are going to connect to the IQ Commander core. It's a lot of cabling to deal with, so make sure you have enough room in your case. And maybe invest in some zip ties too. So once you've mounted the cooler, you're going to want to dive into IQ, and we'll give it a quick rundown here. The first thing that I think is quite cool is the lighting setup menu. And this allows you to reorder and rotate the fans in case you've got them positioned in a wrong place in the cooler. So you can see that our one, it's supposed to be red, yellow, then green, but our one is actually red, green, and yellow. And what we can do is reorder it on the screen. It's not going to have an impact on what you see there, but it means that the screen now matches our cooler. And so if you come off and you apply lighting effects, they're going to apply it in order, which they weren't doing before. Next up, we have the lighting effects menu, and this is pretty self-explanatory. You can pick from a whole bunch of things here. All the usual ones are available. There's the, the ones that are link. They're, under the lighting link menu and that allows you to synchronize across other Corsair hardware or you can do predefined ones just for the cooler itself and they change instantly and that's all very lovely if you like playing with RGB IQ makes it very friendly to do so within the lighting effects menu you also have the hardware lighting and this basically tells the cooler what to do in the event that IQ is not enabled such as when you're rebooting the PC you haven't logged in yet and it's quite simple. The effects are a little bit more limited, but for example, you can just set a static color. And this is useful if you don't like the default rainbow effect. Moving on to the performance menu, uh, you can basically control the speed and the fan curves here. So this can be done on a per device basis, if we enable it like this. Uh, so the pump can have quiet applied, which is about 2200 RPM or so. Uh, balanced adds another 200 and extreme adds another 200. So about 400 RPM variance from the slowest pump to the highest pump. Meanwhile, the fans can have quiet profiles. You can have balanced again, and that's the default out of the box. You can have extreme, or you can even put zero RPM, which means on the low load, the fans will turn off completely and they'll kick in at a lower fan curve than quiet. You can also dive into the all device menu and just apply to the fans all at once, including a fixed percentage, such as between 40 and 100%, if you just wanna leave it at a fixed level of noise. Lastly, if you wanna get more customized, you can hit this button and you'll get a custom fan curve and the software gives you the quiet, balanced and extreme ones to play with and you can then adjust them as you see fit. Down here, we have a simple graphing menu. You can select the time frame. You can select which item you're monitoring, including the temperature. And that just makes it easy to monitor performance over time. So if you're applying load, something to, something to look at. It's always nice to have a bit of monitoring. And lastly, we have the notifications menu, which is essentially telling the system what to do in the event that things are overheating and going wrong. Now, all in all, IQ is very easy to use. I think both on the lighting side and the performance side, one thing I did notice, and this is pre-release software, bear in mind, is that when adding a fourth fan to the Commander Core that's included, you don't get the option to control its performance. So I think something has gone awry there, which I'm sure will be fixed in a future update, but we'll, uh, we'll contact Corsair about that one and let you know if that's not the case. 
So just a quick note on testing in case you're not familiar with the way that we do things. We actually have three cooler test systems using different sockets. We've got the Intel LGA1151, we've got an AMD AM4, and we've got an Intel LGA2066. Now the reason that we do this is because each socket can affect performance. There is the mounting mechanism to take into account, the pump and the CPU will have different hotspots and that can vary by socket, and you also get different power output from different platforms. So for us, the Intel LGA1151 is the lowest power one, the AMD one is the middle, and the LGA2066 is the one that kicks out the most heat, and that's probably going to be the one that helps really distinguish the high-end coolers, such as the one that we're testing today. Now, as you can see, we install the cooler test systems in cases to mimic a real-world setup, and we're running a typical front-to-back airflow pattern. The fans are fixed in terms of speed, and we also overclock each CPU, and this gives a fixed frequency and voltage to play with. It's about minimizing variables. For the test itself, we run a 15 minute run of Prime 95, and we record the maximum core temperature that's reached during the test. And we also account for the ambient temperature. We don't have a temperature controlled lab, so this helps to account for a slight variance in different days. We present the Delta T, and that's what you're gonna see in the graphs. And one last note about all-in-one coolers, such as the one that we're testing today, Anything 240mm and above, which includes our one, is always installed in the roof with the fans mounted beneath as exhaust fans. Anything 120 or 140mm would be mounted in the rear. Starting with the LGA1151 platform, we unfortunately don't have this year's RGB Pro XT to compare to, but we do have the 360mm version of 2018's Pro XT, which uses Acer Tech hardware and has a lower maximum fan speed of 1600 RPM versus 2400 RPM on the new one. The new Capellix cooler beats the older 360mm cooler, achieving the same or better temperatures in each profile while sustaining similar or lower fan speeds, and it's especially good on the quiet profile. At the top of this chart, we're reaching a bottleneck from the chip itself, and the excellent results from Noctua, especially with a single fan fitted with a low noise adapter, show that the 360mm radiator doesn't benefit you all that much, even if it does have a 2 degree better result than the 240mm based H100i RGB Platinum. The AM4 system places greater strain on the coolers. Once again, equivalent profiles produce better results on the new cooler, but this time at least part of that is related to fan speed, if not all of it. Both the quiet and balanced profiles result in fan speeds that are higher by about 200 RPM. Even so, the thermal improvement on quiet is very good. At extreme, the difference in fan speed is over 500 RPM, and the final fan speed well over 2000 RPM on the new cooler is indeed on the extreme side. Yes, the cooler gets a chart-topping result against the competition, but it comes at the cost of noise levels that most will find excessive. Noctua's NHU-12A holds its own here, and the new cooler also tracks closely with the 240mm H100i RGB Platinum. The LGA2066 system generates a lot of heat, and here we really start to see favoritism for liquid coolers and larger radiators. The difference between the new H150i and the older Acertec one is also more pronounced thanks to a big difference in fan speeds, especially in the quiet and extreme profiles. The quiet result is the more impressive one, as while it's very much audible, it also now offers much better performance than the Noctua. The same remains true using the 0rpm fan curve as well. Now in terms of the RPM range on these fans, it's unchanged from the Platinum generation, so it's 400 at the minimum and around 2400 at the maximum. This is a nice wide range and what that allows is users to pick between very low noise cooling or very high performance cooling. Now I do think that at 2400 RPM it's going to be too loud for most people, but to be honest it never really hurts to have that kind of ability to go that high. It, it means the cooling performance is there should it be needed and you can always use something like IQ to limit the maximum fan speed to the one that you're happy with. So also included in the box, but not shown here, is the various mounting gubbins for each of the sockets. Now it's compatible with all the sockets that you would expect, and the mounting mechanism itself is unchanged. And to be honest, that's a good thing. We've tested this cooler on three different sockets, and in every case, the mounting was easy and secure. So starting with the pump, regardless of which profile you have it on, the volume is never that loud. The thing that does change between the profiles is the pitch. And as you move from quiet into balanced, which is the default one, and then into extreme, the pitch becomes like higher, a bit whinier as the speed increases. Now, we actually did some fixed fan speed testing as well on the side. So by fixing the fan speeds, you're able to assess the difference that the pump makes. And we didn't find it to make a difference of more than two degrees between quiet and extreme in any of our test systems, including the most powerful one, the LGA2066. So for most users, I reckon quiet or balanced is the perfect one to use. 
Now, as for the fans, it's not really for me to tell you what is and isn't loud. It's largely going to depend on your ears and your setup. But I'd say that above 1000 RPM is when you really start to notice them. Above 1500 RPM is when they're loud. And above 2000 RPM is when they get a little bit ridiculous, to be honest. Now, fortunately, there is a lot of cooling potential in the sub 1000 and sub 1500 RPM ranges, as evidenced by our LGA 1151 and AMD AM4 testing. Now, if you move up to an LGA 2066 platform or something similar, and if you're doing overclocking, then even the quiet profile is going to result in very obvious noise, but that's to be expected if that's what you're doing. It has the potential to cool it. It doesn't fail. It can keep them cool enough. But if you want really low noise cooling, you're going to have to invest in larger radiators and more fans to keep those sort of CPUs under low noise conditions. Now, I think one area where Corsair can be commended is in the fan ramping. Both up and down, it's very smooth. On some all-in-one liquid coolers, the moment the CPU temperature spikes, the fans do a sudden jolt up and it, it's like a sharp change and it can be very annoying, especially if it's doing it constantly up and down. Now on these, in both directions, the ramping is very, very smooth. It takes around 30 seconds to go from zero to 100%, for example. So it's in that ballpark of the fan ramping motion, essentially. Uh, it's very smooth and this is generally preferred to the more annoying jolts that I just mentioned. So with the testing done, the question remains, should you buy the H150i Elite Capellix cooler? Well, if you're prioritizing a price performance ratio, then the answer is absolutely not. This is not a new platform. And while Corsair has been able to get a fairly okay balance of performance to noise, it's certainly nothing new and it's not something that you wouldn't be able to get cheaper elsewhere. However, that is always the case with RGB products such as this one. Now, I can't really fault the design or the build quality or the mounting all that much. And the cooling performance is ample and flexible enough to choose between quiet and high performance. And it's also joined by pleasing fan ramping and decent pump noise. However, whether it's worth the asking price will depend on how much you're into the RGB. Now, if the answer is a lot, then the combination of the high quality Capellix LEDs, the IQ Commander Core, and the IQ software that ties it all together is probably going to attract you in ways that is hard for us to measure and quantify. And I will say that I think IQ in that regard is one of Corsair's strongest assets. It's easy and intuitive to work with. And if you've got plenty of RGB to play with, then you're probably going to enjoy using the software. Now, based on our testing, I would say that if you're running a mainstream CPU from Intel or AMD, you can probably get away with using the 240 millimeter or 280 millimeter. The 360 millimeter radiator doesn't often add all that much unless you're running at the extreme, but there is a chance that it's going to help you achieve lower fan speeds. And there's also the, the argument that if you have a case which is just going to look better with a 360 millimeter radiator, then you should just buy one anyway. And to be honest, that's probably the market that Corsair is chasing with a product like this one. So in summary, with Corsair redeploying the same call it OEM platform as before, then this is a launch focused much more on features than it is on performance. Now, those features are well implemented, thankfully, at both the hardware and software levels, which makes the Capellix coolers very attractive to people who are RGB fans. If that's you and you're happy to pay the premium for what's on offer, then I found no major drawbacks with the cooler that's going to prevent me from recommending it. It does no favors for Corsair's already confusing catalog, but clearly it wants to be available at every possible price point, And now it has more and stronger competition at the higher end of the all-in-one liquid cooler market. So that wraps up our first video cooler review. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. You can also find us on social media and you can find the full written review with more detail over at the website. Thanks for watching.